All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, right here to the Now Morning Show, right here on TTT. Now, there's been a very exciting partnership between the Bocas Lit Fest and the Now Morning Show itself, and it's called the Family Reading Circle, where there'll be readings for both for children and for adults. And uh, we want to share a video with you of uh, the first installment of the Family Reading so Circle. So take a look. I'm going to read you a wonderful story today. It's one of my very favorite books. I hope you'll enjoy it. It's called The Snail and the Whale, and the author is Julia Donaldson, and it's illustrated by Axel Scheffler. It's about a teeny tiny snail and an enormous whale. This is the tale of the tiny snail and a great big grey-blue humpback whale. This is a rock as black as soot, and this is a snail with an itchy foot. The sea snail slithered all over the rock and gazed at the sea and the ships in the dock. And as she gazed, she sniffed and sighed. The sea is deep and the world is wide. How I long to sail, said the tiny snail. These are the other snails in the flock who all stuck tight to the smooth black rock and said to the snail with the itchy foot, be quiet, don't wiggle, sit still, stay put. But the tiny sea snail sniffed and sighed, then cried, I've got it, I'll hitch a ride. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail that looped and curled and said, ride wanted around the world. This is the whale who came one night when the tide was high and the stars were bright. A humpback whale, immensely long, who sang to the snail a wonderful song of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves. And this is the tale of the humpback whale. He held it out of the starlit sea and said to the snail, come sail with me. This is the sea so wild and free that carried the whale and the snail on his tail to towering icebergs and far-off lands with fiery mountains and golden sands. These are the waves that arched and crashed and foamed and frolicked and sprayed and splashed the tiny snail on the tail of the whale. And these are the caves beneath the waves where colourful fish with feathery fins and sharks with hideous toothy grins swam past the whale and the snail on his tail. This is the sky so vast and high, sometimes sunny and blue and warm, sometimes filled with a thunderstorm with zigzag lightning flashing and frightening the tiny snail on the, on the tail of the whale. And she gazed at the sky, the sea, the land, the waves and the caves and the golden sand. She gazed and gazed, amazed by it all, and she said to the whale, I feel so small. But then came the day, the whale lost his way. These are the speedboats running a race, zigging and zooming all over the place, upsetting the whale with their air-splitting roar making him swim too close to the shore. This is the tide slipping away. And this is the whale lying beached in a bay. Quick, off the sand, back to sea, cried the snail. I can't move on land, I'm too big, moaned the whale. The snail felt helpless and terribly small. Then, I've got it, she cried, and started to crawl. I must not fail, said the tiny snail. I wonder where she's going and hope she can help our big whale. This is the bell from the school in the bay, ringing the children in from their play. This is the teacher holding her chalk, telling the class, sit straight, don't talk. And this is the board as black as soot. And this is the snail with the itchy foot. A snail, a snail, the teacher turns pale. Look, say the children, it's leaving a trail. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail saying, save the whale. These are the children running from school, fetching the firemen, digging a pool, squirting and spraying to keep the whale cool. This is the tide coming into the bay, 
And these are the villagers shouting, Hooray! As the whale and the snail travel safely away. Back to the dock and the flock on the rock, who said, How time's flown! Haven't you grown? And the whale and the snail told their wonderful tale of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves and of how the snail, so small and frail, with her looping, curling, silvery trail, saved the life of the humpback whale. Then the humpback whale held out his tail and on called snail after snail after snail. And they sang to the sea as they all set sail on the tail of the great blue humpback whale. The end. That was wonderful and you know, so for those of you who, you know, are missing the library and you can't go to read books or to read books for your children, that was just the first installment there of the Family Reading Circle, which is now a partnership between the Now Morning Show and uh, the Bocas Lit Fest. And to tell us more about that partnership is Ardeen Suju, who is the Marketing and Media Coordinator of the Bocas Lit Fest. She's on the phone. Hey Ardeen, once more. Hi again, Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great, to, it's great to hear you. And, um, you know, I was just asking how you're doing in this time of COVID and, you know, um, you know, being that so many things have slowed down or have been put on pause. Well, you know, honestly, I would not mind to slow down a little bit more myself. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, we continue to work, to do a lot. Um, we've migrated a lot of our work online, thankfully. Right. Um, we started various initiatives online. And we're just happy to be able to continue to find ways to collaborate and channels through which our programming can be shared and folks can participate, you know. So we continue to work, um, sometimes a busier than others. Right. As you may know, this weekend would have been our, the, the 10th annual National Literary Festival, yes. the NGC Book of Lit Fest. Um, we are still doing things this weekend. We have the prize announcement for our two major prizes still this weekend. So that has been keeping us busy, and we're collaborating with you guys on a, yeah, on a couple of right? things the television. <laughs> you know, and I should mention that that was through the series of the Let's Read TT group, with whom we're also collaborating to bring this initiative to life. I mean, they're the ones doing all the work, obviously, yeah. um, but we're happy to be partnering with them. And, and I don't know if you recall that it was just about maybe two or three months ago, we came to PPT to launch the Family Reading Circle yes, at yes. the Writers' Center. Yes. Oh, yes. So, you know, so that's exactly. been moved uh, in, a, in a virtual format now. Yes, exactly. So what we were happy to do was to be able to find the opportunity to present it using mainstream television. Because there's so much stuff online. We felt, you know, there are many people who are not benefiting because they don't have access to the Internet. That's or right. they may not have the devices necessary. So why not use the medium that many people still have access to? Yeah. And so, I mean, why not TTT, right? Exactly, you know, TTT is, is home. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, uh, you know, we, we, we have learned that uh, there are the ch reading of the children's literature as well as that for adults. What can the adults look forward to? Well, the adults can look forward to hearing from a lot of the up and coming and established authors here in Trinidad and Tobago. I mean, where possible, we'd be happy to get authors from across the region to send their videos to share with you. But, you know, it's one of the things I think people look forward to when they go to something like a reading or even come to the festival, the, the NGC Book of Fest. Yeah. And it's that thing about hearing an author read his or her own work. You know, so you may have a book, but then somehow it comes to life a little bit more when you hear it expressed in the words of the person writing it. Yeah, definitely. You know, because you may have a voice in your head of how you may narrate it while you read, but, you know, having it come from the source itself is something really special. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and so Suzette Cadiz, and I have to talk a little bit about Let's Read and the work they've been doing. As you may know, they work to promote literacy in primary schools across the country, Trinidad and Tobago. And they believe in encouraging the love of reading um, through the increase in the accessibility of good quality books and developing functioning school libraries. And so that's all about building the capacity of teachers and inspiring a community of readers. You know, and so that's why we felt that was such a good fit, because while we do literary development, I mean, it's really important. We can't exist if we don't continue to nurture new generations of readers. That's right. And, I mean, reading is obviously competing with so many more sort of instant gratification 
um, forms of entertainment um, out there, right? That's right. So I think wherever there are groups working to do that kind of work already and still that love of reading from an early age, I think we definitely have an obligation and a duty of care to be able to bring their work to life as well. And so it's really an honor to be able to partner with Let's Read to do this kind of work. Definitely. And, you know, I, I think it's so appropriate because, um, you know, in, in I grew up reading a lot. You know, I would go to the library and I would pick up, uh, you know, novels and, and different um, age-appropriate books and stuff. You know, I used to read uh, Goosebumps a lot, <laughs> for instance. <laughs> and, um, you know, that love of reading had stayed with me because it was instilled from a young age. So, you know, like what uh, Let's Read is doing there, I think it's a step in the right direction. Because, again, as you rightly said, there are so many other formats and uh, instant gratification uh, platforms that, you know, young people tend toward. And I, I think it's so important to get them back to the foundation and reading and, you know, actually having a book in their hand rather than scrolling through a device. Yeah, and I mean, the quality of the book really makes a difference. You know, books that engage, of course, as Suzette would have demonstrated, books with the right kind of pictures, illustrations. You know, there's so many ways in which, I mean, there's so much research as well that's been done. Mm -hmm show how effective reading or presenting literature and stories, most importantly, in a certain kind of way, can be on a child's mind, it's particularly the act of reading aloud, which yeah. is what Lex Read is also about. That's right. That's right. And with that, Ardine, uh, I want to thank you for joining us this morning again, and we look forward to more and more installments and all the great work that the uh, NGC Bookers Lit Fest has been doing, that Let's Read has been doing as well. And of course, I'm very excited about this partnership between the Now Morning Show and uh, those two organizations. Yes, thank you, Carrie. We look forward to spending some more time with you all also. Oh, yes, for sure. All right, with, <laughs> that, with that, we're going to take a short break and come back with a little more because we still have a bit more planned for the program. So stay with us.